I'm Patrick Murphy Racy, Sony Artist of Imagery. Uh, this is part two of my review of the Sony A7 IV uh, camera. And this is specifically about shooting action, stills with action. Uh, with it, I have, you know, real experience with this camera, uh, even as many of you are waiting for your copy to come. So just a couple highlights. Um, the yay points of the A A7 IV, which there are many, First of all, it's a massive sensor, 33 megapixel. Uh, it's a backside illuminated sensor, which is Sony speak for it's really good. And uh, like in the old days, you used to have to choose, do I want a big sensor or do I want it to be really good in low light? Now Sony is able to, through this backside illuminated sensor, offer us 33 megapixels and 15 stops at dynamic range, which is you know pretty miraculous even now. The uh, camera can do 10 frames per second with either mechanical shutter or electronic or silent shutter. Uh, one of the coolest things about it is, is it has all the Alpha 1 menus. So everything that the A1 has, not, not all the, everything, can't do everything, but the menu system is the same as the Alpha 1 and the A7S 3 which is fantastic. It takes two different types of card media. It takes either the um, newer and much faster CF Express Type A cards, or it'll take typical SDHC or SDXC cards uh, as well. Um, one of the big things I noticed using the camera right out of the box is that it is super, super, super stable with the Imaging Edge app, which is free from Sony. And this allows you to move images straight from the camera to your phone and then go out to social media or whatever. You know, you can send them whatever. One of the things that people have been missing about the A7S III, the Alpha 1, and, the, and also the A7 IV is that the camera, when you leave RAW mode, you can choose between either JPEG, which is an 8-bit lossy mode, or HEIF files, which are 16-bit lossless files. So you can take advantage of a massive, massive uh, color gamut that is not in a typical JPEG. And I'm happy to report that at this point, um, the Affinity Photo, which is a $55 imaging uh, processing software that's similar to Photoshop, um, is able to edit these files. And, and a lot of the Lightrooms, uh, more recent Lightrooms, can also do this too. But this is, um, I think what's going to happen in the next year or so is that as people discover these high files, which are 16-bit lossless, the lure of raw is going to completely go away because you're going to get this massive lossless ability to capture a much smaller file than a JPEG and have more benefit in the post-processing side of things without having to wait for raws and all the, the RAM they eat up. So um, I'm really happy that Sony didn't hold this feature back uh, like the other two used to do. They would keep it just for the pro cameras. I love the fact that it's the same deal. Um, one other thing I want to point out too is that the, the grip, the way the, ca the camera feels is identical in every way to the Alpha 1, uh, which is wonderful. It even takes the same grip, the battery grip. So if you have an A1 and you're going to add an A7 IV as a backup or something like that, um, it's going to feel identical in your hands, which is really good news, especially for people who shoot a lot of action uh, photography. Now, that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is going to come in two parts, um, and these are pain points, okay? So the A7 IV and the A9 II, and sorry, that's a typo. That should be two, not three. The EVF resolution, that is to say, when you look through the eyepiece in the camera and you're looking into the little TV screen that's in there, it's the same. It's 3.68 mil dots. Um, the problem is the A7 IV has 120 frame per second um, readout speed in the EVF. Now the Alpha 1's EVF resolution is 9.44 mil dot and it has the ability to go all the way up to 240 frames per second in terms of the EVF uh, readout speed. Now this is a big substantial difference and it's impossible for me to uh, really give a good review of the camera without talking about this. Now, this is going to be strictly for people who shoot action. Now, not just sports, but if you shoot like performance and dance and things like that, if you shoot uh, rock and roll and people are jumping around, this is going to, you really need to pay attention to what's, what's going to happen next. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over to Photo Mechanic and take a look at some images from a football game I shot. So we are now uh, looking at a game that I shot uh, when I had a pre-production camera. Um, we're going to look at 315 pictures. That sounds like a lot, but hey, I'm a sports photographer. We're going to do this really fast. Now, the first thing I want to point out is the obvious, amazing um, low-light potential for the a7 IV. It is a really, really, truly remarkable camera. Um, take a look at these uh, exposure information. I'm shooting a thousandth of a second at 2.8 at 12,800 ISO. Now, these images, even on your screen as you're viewing them, you're going to be able to see how good they are. They're quite amazing. This is a 4028 G Master. Uh, so 1,028 at 12,800 ISO. Now, I'm going to move that away so we can just look at the images and keep things simple. Um, what you're going to see is that when you're shooting loose like this, the camera is very capable. Now, I'm in mechanical shutter here at 10 frames per second, and I'm shooting uh, full-size uh, JPEGs. Now, these are my favorite because both feet are off the ground, so that's what I'm looking for, okay? And uh, when one foot's down, it's not as good, but we're, we're going to keep going. So there's an almost... Okay, now referee step in front of me. So I want to talk about this first. So how good is the tracking of the a7 IV? Um, and so here I'm completely blocked. The only thing you can see is a highlight off the helmet right there. And so the a7 IV is still tracking. Now, there he is again. And come out the other side, he's good. Now the referee's completely gone. And you can see he's turning here. He's got a, you know, a defender coming on him. But it's very sharp. There's off the ground, both feet. So I'm not seeing, like, I'm used to seeing the Alpha 1 files at 30 frames a second, which are, you know, obviously better because you have a lot more freedom because this is one-third that speed. But still, for a $2,500 camera, this is pretty amazing. So now he's about to get tackled. He's going into traffic. The camera is still focusing on him. It has not lost him. It's actually really good, sharp focus, even though it's a little underexposed for my taste. You can't even see his face here, but you can see the camera's tracking him in traffic, even though it can't see him anymore properly. He's emerging on the other side. You can see him holding the ball here, so he's still hanging in there. He's broken through that and is, is keeping going. And now you can tell he's about to get hit, and he gets swallowed up. And the camera's still continuing to focus on him. Now, this is, this is uh, I'm using um, level four uh for the stickiness here so just in case you're wondering and now i can't see him at all but the camera is still focused on where he was uh, which is pretty impressive so here's a quarterback he's just gotten the snap he's going to drop back he's going to throw um and there's the receiver so here he comes um and remember this is 12,800. this is not a bright field by any stretch um, so this is an African-American dark guy, dark complected guy, you know, playing at night in, in, in basically Hunter Green. So pretty much a worst case scenario. Um, everything is looking good here. This one is not as sharp as I'd like, but his face is out, but his foot is completely sharp. And so I'm going to call that motion blur on the upper body. Now he's sharp again. And off we go. Now, here's where I want you to start paying attention. Watch my framing here. So as the running back is getting closer to the edge of the frame, let's see what happens here. I'm still pretty loose, but I'm getting tighter horizontally. Now, notice that I cropped his foot out. Now, here I've got his foot and lots of room below it, but here the, the foot is cropped out. And now I'm correcting a little bit. I'm dropping down a little bit. I'm, I'm late. I'm following the action too late. And this is all about the difference between the Alpha 1 and the A7 IV in terms of the readout speed. Okay, now he's going to go and hit the ground. He's still off the ground. Now he's knee down and down. Okay, so here's another uh, snap to the quarterback. Here we go right before. He's looking downfield. He finds a receiver. He throws. Uh, I miss the catch, which I often do. And here we are, um, nice and tight on the receiver, who is now facing an opponent. Uh, this first frame is not super sharp. 
I don't think um, it's a little front focused because like it's focused here and here, but not back here. The camera corrects, however, in that second frame, which is good. So now we're back in focus on the face. We're still sharp. Now watch the edge of the frame because this is where the danger zone is. Like on the a7 IV, if you're shooting this tight, you're asking for trouble. Now look, he's way over there. I'd like to tell you I, I cropped like this on, pur you know, on purpose in the viewfinder, but I didn't. I'm about to lose this guy out of the right side of the, of the viewfinder. Now I'm correcting a little bit, but I've cropped off his foot. And now I'm finding him again, but I'm, I'm a little too low. You know, I should be camera down a little bit. Now I got his foot. He's about to go down anyway. Now he's up. Now I've lost him out of the frame entirely. I really feel like I would have kept him better in the frame with the Alpha 1. So I'm just pointing this out as, as a real life, real world, you know, thing. Now I'm really happy that the camera is still focusing because his nose and his eyes are really, really sharp right here. And by the way, these are all straight out of camera. There's been no manipulation in, of the exposure or anything like that. This is just right out of the camera. I thought that was most useful. And now I'm going to lose him. And I've cropped his finger off and part of the ball. And his shoe is half, you know, it's just, it's really, really hard to track moving action quickly with a slow viewfinder. And that's what the uh, A7 IV has. So now I've cropped off his foot. Now I'm coming down. All right, next frame. Now look how sharp this is. I'm just going to, I'm just going to blow this up really quick just so you can see just how amazingly sharp this is. And this is, remember, this is 12,800 ISO. This is really, really impressive. It's a very, very dark dark gem, excuse me, dark, dark field. So here we go, got two frames of that, three frames of that. I must have missed whatever play that was because here's the next one. Now he's gonna do a handoff, a little toss there. Now the, our running back has it again. Watch the running back stay in focus even though there's a defender and an offensive lineman blocking for him. He's still sharp, he emerges on the other side. We're still looking good. And here he comes. This is a nice frame. Good eyes up. It's amazing to me how these cameras, um, A9, A92, especially the Alpha 1, and even now A7 IV, they are able to give you IAF even though people are in helmets. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. Okay, in traffic, so he's still sharp here. Now I'm going to lose him out of the side of the frame, or will I correct enough? Because look at how far over he is on the right, and look at all the dead space on the left. This is just because I can't keep up with the action because the viewfinder is in slow motion. And now the camera lost focus. So it's, it's changed from here to here. Um, now it can't find anything. It's, it's not sharp at all anywhere. And then I got this nice frame at the end. It's like the, the ball's already down, but this is kind of a cool frame. Um, you know, accident, sometimes they happen. <clears throat> All right, quarterback again, dropping back to pass. Uh, I missed the reception again, which I do often. And this is, this is a really interesting thing. Now, I remember looking at these images right after this play was over with in the viewfinder. What I remember is that I didn't think the camera was sharp at all. The problem is I have two Alpha 1s, and I've got the really, really nice 9.4 mil dot EVFs, which allow me to see sharp focus easily and all the time, even in low light. Here we go. Still focus, still tracking the running back and not the receiver or the uh, defender. Really nice here. Now, this is tricky. Even though it's a 4028, and that's like the finest, it's, it's an awesome lens, you know, for sports photography. Just look at how the camera is now focusing where it's supposed to and ignoring all this activity back here. It's great. The tracking autofocus system is phenomenal. Now we get a nice, you know, horizontal guy trying to pull him down. And finally he goes down. Here's a little kicker picture. Um, it's, it's really good because you start here with tracking and then you recompose. So the autofocus, you know, indicators in the middle here. But since I've activated out of him, I can recompose 
and now it's tracking him without me even having him in the center of the frame, which is awesome. And you can see even through three people, it's shooting through 21, 10, and, and this, uh, this guy who's defending on special teams, here he is, totally sharp. Still sharp. Still sharp. Still sharp. Really impressive. And a little, you know, kudos to him. Just looking through, you know, the camera does not autofocus as well as the Alpha 1 or the A9 II or the A9, but it's dang good. It's, it's easily the best camera outside of those three cameras that I've ever used that Sony's made. Okay, here's a kicker on the other side, nice and tight. He's just received the ball. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a quarterback, excuse me. A little handoff here, good light. It's also nice when they wear white uniforms and gold helmets instead of dark green and black. Okay, so there he is running into traffic. You can see just a tiny bit of his leg here, and it's sharp. And now I think it's lost him because he's right here, so it did lose him. Believe it or not, Alpha 1 would actually track this pretty well. And now the camera lost it lost its focus, and it just went to the closest guy, the back of number 2, which you can kind of understand. So behind the line of scrimmage, a little bit, a little toss, a run around the outside. I'm going to lose him. He's still sharp, though. Here we go. I wanted to do this because you can get so many images of a kick of the ball, like, you know, on the foot, two inches off the foot, a foot off the foot, three foot off the foot with the Alpha 1. At 10 frames a second, at a third of that speed, you just can't. So you get, you know, I was lucky to get this. Here's the next frame. The ball's completely gone out of frame. Again, Alpha 1 is the, you know, is the Mac Daddy. Again, I just want to pull this over, show you how sharp this is. Uh, it's just such a pleasure to be able to use a camera. It costs 2500 bucks, shoots 10 frames a second, and can give you this type of level. And check this out. This is 16,000 ISO, so I had to change it. Uh, so this is 16,000 ISO, and that is just so impressive. Okay. Here's a reception on the other side of the field, long ways away. And he didn't catch it. It's too bad. I just want to note, note that here he is not sharp. And I don't see anything sharp in the pitch or the grass. So what happened here? What happening here is, is I'm moving too much left to right because I'm, again, I'm in slow, I'm in slow motion. A7-4's viewfinder can't keep up. So I feel myself rushing uh, my pans so that I'm making this image out of focus on my, on my, on my very own. Uh, but by the time I settle on him, of course, it's too late and he's already not caught the ball. But you can see the difference in these two frames and look at the framing. You know, I've, I had him. And now I'm sharp, but I'm not moving anymore. But it doesn't matter because it's too late. And so here he is. Okay. This frame, out of focus. I'm not liking it. It's um, You can see the, the grass behind him is sharp. All the pitch is, is good. So, But now it's got it again. So there's a little bit of a lag with A7 IV. If you've shot the Alpha 1, you're going to notice that lag. If you've never shot the Alpha 1 or the A9 or the A9 II, this camera is awesome for action. You just can't touch those other cameras first. It'll ruin you. So this one's sharp. This one's not. Now he's sharp again. So it's this is more indicative of a DSLR's performance where you're getting two or three frames sharp and then one drop. And, uh, and then it finds it again. This is good. This is good. And what you'll find, too, look how sharp his eyes are. You can see the catch lights and the two light stanchions in his eyeballs. That's cool. Um, yeah, this is this is really cool. Uh, yeah, a little soft. Back to sharp again. Nice and tight, though. Uh, and the tighter you are with the Sony, the better the autofocus works, which is really nice. And you can tell it's absolutely nailing his eye. So that we're, we're definitely in IAF here. Now, when he turns away, we're going to lose that. And by here, now we've got a nice sharp uniform, which is what you'd get with a DSLR anyway. Um but sometimes it can see in there. So we're still uniform. Yeah, now he's getting really close. There's a nice frame. Very nice. A little out. 
and again, this might be me moving the camera too quickly, trying to make sure I've got a mistake. This is out of focus, definitely out of focus. This focus is like right there. You can kind of see. Um, and then now the camera's lost it. The focus is on the back of number three. And just too close. And notice how, like, I'm not trying to shoot this guy. I'm trying to shoot this guy. But the camera is so slow in the viewfinder that it's I've lost him entirely. And this is the big warning for people that want to shoot action with the a7 IV. It's a fantastic camera, but it's not going to give you great results when you've got, like, super tight and you're panning. So here's uh, a long pass into the end zone. Now I'm too tight here. And by the way, this is on electronic shutter. Um, and one of the things I want to point out is the exposure is brighter here than it is up here. And this is that uh, anti-flicker, which was on. And now you can kind of see he's looking for the ball. At least I've got him in the frame. Now here's where on electronic shutter you can see the distortion on his face. Now this is the part that I really want you to pay attention to because this helmet is not shaped like that. This is like an egg shaped and this face is not shaped like that either. So what we're seeing here is rolling shutter and the larger the um, megapixel, the harder it is for um, the sensor to deal with the rolling shutter issues, the jello effect. So this is pretty severe. That's a really bad frame and it really shows now look at the helmet on the gold helmet here versus this one. You can see the difference. Uh, and now I've got, you know, I've got the ball coming into the frame, but I've cut off his hand. I've cut off half his body. It's unfortunate because I was, I was on it, but I couldn't get the camera to get on the action quick enough because I was in slow motion. I'm just late. There, I missed him entirely. Remember, I'm still trying to track the guy, and the number two guy, and I just can't. I don't have a prayer because it's too tight. So one of the lessons about this video, if you take away anything, is if you're going to shoot action with this camera, you've got to do it in the mechanical shutter and not electronic, and you got to stay loose. You can't get too tight, which kind of defeats the purpose of shooting sports. This is a fuzzball. Um, sharp again, sharp again, sh very sharp, sharp, really sharp, really stinking sharp. That's nice. Okay, pretty sharp. Pretty sharp. Mm, ball is sharp. Now we're back to sharp again. So the camera's really doing quite a good job. Again, this is 16,000 ISO. And I'm keeping them in the frame pretty well. Oh, oh, except for now. So you can see my problem. I would not have this problem with the Alpha 1 or the A92. So just bear this in mind. This is really, you know, critical. This is where he goes in for a touchdown. And I completely lost them all together at that point. So I'm going to kind of blow through these here a little quicker, um, making the corner beat his uh, opponent there. That's always a nice little frame. Um, yeah, this is looking good. But see how I'm having trouble framing? I would, I would be to the, you know, I'd have more dead space where he's running instead of behind him. Great for coaches. I shot this just so you could see that dynamic range. So this guy in the middle of the quarterback in the middle of the field is um, lit by the light stanchions. And look at the, um, you know, you'd see this, <clears throat> the, the, the letters that are backlit are bright, but they're not completely blown out. Uh, it's amazing how much dynamic range this thing has. Okay, so there he is. And then he's blocked by his own guy. Now we see him free again, both feet off the ground. That's a nice frame. And now he's running into traffic. Okay, it lost it lost him, and now it's on this guy. Now it's picked him up again. Okay, notice how I have all this room below and very little above. This is the problem of the, the, slow, the slow speed of the EVF. Okay, so I think we're almost to the end. That's my son talking to girls like he's supposed to. Okay, uh, let's see here. Nice drop back to pass in traffic, looking for a receiver. He's still sharp. Still sharp, he's running now. He's still sharp, and he's running. You can see his foot, the ball right there. Again, very impressive autofocus system. This tracking autofocus is phenomenal.
Okay, there's a there's a release. There's a catch that I missed again. All right, that's out of focus. And now he's kind of in focus, but he's falling. And you can see I can't keep him in the frame. And I really can't keep him in the frame. Really nice and sharp here. This is great. Really nice. Yeah, good stuff. So let's see if we'll, it'll lose him. Nope, he's still sharp. You can see his arm right there. And now the camera's kind of moving away from the runner. Nope. Okay, it found him. That's good. But look at the framing. I just don't do this. I would have been framed up here, you know, where I'd have him and looking where he's going. Um, so another, another series here. A little push off. Okay. I was looking for a sack there. There's a nice frame coming up here, right here. I love this. This is great. <laughs> I mean, this is still a better picture because it's got both of them. Like I've got this guy's face and he's going to wrap them up. He's going to be late. But this is kind of cool right there. I like that. All right, running in traffic. Look at all those guys and the tracking autofocus is still on him, which is great. I want to point this out. Very important. This stick is not bent like that. This is a very lightweight flag. It just zip tied to a stick, a, a one by two. Um, this bend that you're seeing is the um, the inability for the shutter to get rid of that rolling shutter effect. So again, another problem here. That's that stick is not bent like that. No way, no way is it like that. So, and you can see it bending the other way now. So kind of a bummer. Nice little Jubo picture. Okay, nice frame in traffic again. Really good composition because this is like nothing's really happening yet. Let's see how I do. And now he's going to dive into traffic. And I've lost him. There's a nice reception. A little late, but it's still there. So in short, uh, I just want to give you guys my overall opinion of the a7 IV. It is a fantastic camera if you're a general assignment photographer. If you're shooting portraits, if you're shooting landscape, uh, if you're shooting, um, you know, slow moving things or just people sitting, nature photography, it's incredible. It's a really, really great camera. But, but if you're shooting birds in flight or if you're shooting uh, sports or performance, like real action, auto racing, things like that, it really isn't the best camera to use. It's still going to be the A9, the A92, and especially the Alpha 1. That's that's where you're going to want to do this. So can you shoot sports with the a seven four? Yeah. I mean, I just showed you a lot of examples, some nice pictures that came from half of a game. This is just from half of a game. Uh, yes, you can. But you have to be careful, and you can't shoot too tight and expect to track properly and compose on the fly. You just can't do it because the, the EVF is too slow. One last thing I'll say is that the when I was shooting this game um, with the a7 IV, I was under the impression that, I, that most everything I was shooting was not in focus. And then I got it back on the computer and realized that most everything I'd shot was in focus. I was just so used to the 9.44 mil dot from the Alpha 1 that I'd forgotten what it was like to shoot with 3.68 mil dot EVF. So as you're making decisions about what camera to get, really think hard about if you're going to shoot action or not. If you're not going to shoot action, I cannot recommend the a7 IV enough. It is just a phenomenal camera for shooting stills. Um, I'll do another video in the, at some point in the future on the benefits of the a7 IV for video because they are it's a plethora of things that are just awesome about this camera. Um, but uh, but anyway, until then, this is Pat Murphy Racy saying, I really hope you've enjoyed this. And um, uh, yeah, so put your questions or comments below. And please subscribe if you found this helpful. Thanks so much. Happy New Year.